Hi everyone and welcome back to Family Law Assistance. I can't believe what day it is already. I don't know about you, but just time seems to be in a blur. Anyway, I thought I'd start today talking about Christmas and the lead up to Christmas, which is always a really difficult time, especially here at Family Law Assistance. Lots of people struggle through this time of year. And as much as possible, we're here just to give you help, some support, and a safe space for you to talk and get that support. You know, I grew up and my father wasn't around very much and every Christmas was the same. So my dad worked abroad and every Christmas was the same. I mean, I'm, I'm a Christmas lover. I mean, it's criminal in our house that we haven't yet got the Christmas tree up. But when I was growing up, <clears throat> and I must have been about, I don't know, 11, 12, I distinctly remember one Christmas where we'd be preparing all the Christmas decorations. We'd be making those paper chains. Who remembers that? I mean, how old school is that? The tree would be up, the lights would be tinkling, and we'd be really looking forward to the big day itself. But there was always one thing missing, and that would be my dad. And I can't begin to tell you how how much I remember. I remember so much detail. I remember the smells. I remember where my mum was. I remember what I was doing. I remember what I was playing with. I remember what my sister was doing. I remember what my sister was playing with. But I remember, more importantly, that I was separated from my dad. And as the days got closer and closer to Christmas, and we'd made even more Christmas stuff, at school because that's what you did back then must have been about three days before Christmas and my mum was putting a joint of beef in the oven and the door went so I totally get that Christmas is really really difficult in fact it's no surprise that um, a lot of lawyers deal with divorce January having a family Christmas on its own, regardless of whether there are child issues, regardless of whether you're in family law. I mean, we're just talking normal family, everyday life. <laughs> People argue the tensions around Christmas get really, really het up. People fall out. You've got your aunt Flo from down the road who insists on coming, your uncle Jack that always has three or four more bottles of wine than he says to, and grannies just a couple of sherries, the social drinker, turns into a raging alcoholic on, on Christmas Day. And guess what? <laughs> All happening under one roof. Now, I don't care who you're bubbling up with this Christmas, whether you're planning to have Christmas on your own or whether you're going to invite the whole shebang, the whole family, it doesn't matter. One thing is for sure that for a lot of people, A, tensions can rise and tempers can fray. And that Regardless of anything else, if you're somebody that's been separated from your children, that's a very lonely um, and very difficult experience. So what I thought I would do in today's video is just talk about, just give you some tips really on how to get through that. First of all, my top tip is to be realistic. And by that, I mean, be realistic with your ex. Be realistic as to where you are. Now, you may have social services involvement. You may have an ex that just simply won't compromise. You, you might even have a court order that prohibits you from having contact with your children over Christmas. So by rocking up and going, give me Christmas Day, you might need to be rethinking that. Tip number two, plan and be organised. I can't begin to tell you how many times I have told clients there's a bunch of stuff that you can do. So whether you're currently in family proceedings in family court, whether you think you might need to ask the court for help, whichever, you can start by planning and being organised. Now I'm like a, <clears throat> I'm a stuck record at this point, I fully acknowledge it. One of the things I will always bang on about is to make sure you keep uh, organized records get the get the binder yeah get the binder start putting that stuff in your folder and start having that into some meaningful order i know you all have got a paperwork in the bread bin been at this gig a long time to know where people accidentally put their paperwork 
Number three comes as a bit of a surprise, but that's to compromise. You know, there's a saying that we have, and that's the person that has the most flexibility is in charge of the system. So compromise. Is there room for negotiation? Does it really matter that you have all of Christmas Day? Can the Christmas Day be split into two? Some families aren't actually bothered by Christmas and you might want to have a second Christmas and that might be a few days later. Can, it, can Christmas be alternating? So having that ability to compromise gives you much more flexibility and you're probably more likely to get what you want. Tip number four. If you are in a position where you're either prohibited from spending time with your children and can't see them directly. One of my tips is to keep yourself busy. And I guess that kind of comes into sort of planning an organization when you've got kids at Christmas. By making yourself busy, it's a distraction technique. It really is. I know that there are lots of people, we look at our, our, our algorithms, can't get my teeth out this morning, we look at our algorithms and we know when people are looking at our blogs at two, three in the morning. I guarantee that that figure will be upped considerably on Christmas Day itself. So for those of you I speak to you now, keep yourself busy. And often, especially when there's a family dispute or if you're in family court proceedings, to keep yourself organised. Tip number five. If you do have your, your children at Christmas, keep conversations light. Christmas is a difficult time to negotiate at the best of times, whether you're in family court proceedings or you're not. I remember sort of when I went over to my in-laws, for example, I was surprised at how loud everybody was. There seemed to be four or five people and they were all speaking at the same time and at equally high volume. And I just remember thinking, does it need to be that loud? Now, coming from, I'm pretty quiet, believe it or not, but that kind of put, I remember put that putting me on edge and I remember not feeling that I could cope with that at the time. Of course, we're like 13, 14 years down the line now and I'm old hat at it. But joking aside, it's, di it's difficult sometimes to keep your personal thoughts and your personal feelings about what you feel about the ex to yourself and sometimes it's, it's easy to start ranting or to start having your thoughts and feelings about a the situation court proceedings the ex you name it in front of the kids huge no-no anyway and listen I know I'm preaching to the choir but I wanted to mention it because again Christmas does bizarre things to us Christmas because there's that expectation to be jolly blimey I mean I was watching Elf the other day so you know that's where we are. Last night was Scrooge, and that's probably more accurate, I'd say. So keep the conversation light. Number six, talk. Talk through your stresses. Without a shadow of a doubt, everybody that watches us, that read our blogs, watches our lives, see um, our team talking, look at our post, respond to our post, there's one thing that all of you have in common and that this is a super stressful time for people. And the best way to manage that is to talk about your stresses. Now, whether that's whether you've got your own support group, whether you've got whether it's here, <clears throat> whether there are other groups that you're part of, whether it's a friend or whether it's somebody else that's going through the situation. My top tip is to talk through your stresses. And finally, my biggest tip, save the best to last, right? My biggest tip is to look after yourself. Your children need you to be fighting fit and healthy. This process in family court can very much feel overwhelming and all consuming. And it depletes what you eat, it depletes how you exercise, it depletes how much water you drink. And we all know, and we've read it enough, that when we don't have what we need nutritionally, sleep, that that has a huge impact on how we conduct our lives. 
Your kids are relying on you to be the best version of you if you're going through family courts right now. So my biggest tip to you is to look after yourself. So the door went and I crept downstairs and yep, Christmas Eve and my dad had arrived. Christmas could then begin. Guys, I'm going to keep doing these lives. I've got some hooters coming up for you on Friday where I'm going to be talking to the amazing, incredible Terry Harmon. Now, a lot of people think that people who do what we do are in opposition to solicitors and couldn't be further from the truth. What we do and what a solicitor doing, although we get very different results, we're on the same team. We just get what we just get results very differently. So you're not going to want to miss that. I think that's at 10, 11, 12. She says vaguely um, on Friday. You're not going to want to miss that. Guys, pop some deets. I want to hear from you. So pop some deets down below. How are you coping with Christmas? What have you got planned or not got planned? Are you a separated parent? Are you going to get to see your children? As ever, hoot and holler at me if you need any help. Guys, have a great day. Over and out.